Tudor have just launched their highly anticipated, much rumoured Marine National Diver. So I thought we'd check it out together. Oh. Welcome back to Bark and Jack, I am Adrian and I haven't got hands on with the watch yet. I'm just looking through the press photos and the press pack that's just been sent through. I can't get down to London this week, which is why I'm not going to the Watch Pro event. But very soon I'm gonna be in London and I'm currently organizing getting hands on with this watch. So these are my initial thoughts on what Tudor have done, just like what Omega did with James Bond to adjust the Seamaster to be exactly what James Bond needed. Tudor have done the same with this watch, the Pelagos, and Marine National. My initial feeling of the bezel is it's odd seeing it the opposite way around. This is a slightly different bezel from normal, uh, but it also feels a bit cluttered. So the bezel, we have a bi-directional bezel. It isn't unidirectional on the normal dive watch, so it doesn't just go one way, it goes both directions. And it's also a retrograde bezel. This bezel is used for navigation as opposed to a normal dive bezel on a normal dive watch, which is used for measuring dive time. This bezel has a full register around it, but I don't understand, uh, perhaps I need to look more into this when I do the proper video, but I don't understand the relationship between there being around the triangle of the bezel. Both sides have four markers, creating zero, one, two, three, four, and then the new marker, five. But then between the 55 marker and 50, you only have 55, 54, 53, 52, and then it jumps to 50. Visually, it throws it off but also functionality-wise, I don't understand the purpose of that. It's interesting that they called this the Pelagos. I think they could have opened this up to be a new range. Although it obviously has a lot of Pelagos about it, there's a lot that's different between this and the Pelagos. There is no date, this is a time-only watch, but the dial itself, although it's blue, has the square markers and the snowflake hands, it doesn't have the very large indented step that the normal Pelagos has. We only have four lines of text, which I'm sure a lot of people will be happy about. A lot of people moan about the Pelagos having too many lines of text at the bottom. This only has four uh, and looks quite tidy. I really like, I love the Pelagos, but I really like this dial. The dial feels like it has the same level of purpose, purposefulness that the Pelagos has, but it just feels a bit more refined. It, this feels like Pelagos 2.0 and I, I really like that dial. One of my big criticisms of the Pelagos is the difference in color between the dial, the blue dial and the blue bezel. I'll be really interested to see how the colors of this watch do play out. I'm keen to see how uniform these colors are. Before we move on from the bezel, it's a big point to note that this is a very aggressive bezel. You can see that the, the bezel grip around the edge is more, it's more aggressive, it's more sharp than the normal Pelagos, which I really like. It's also an oversized bezel as well. On the normal Black Bay range and the normal Pelagos range, the bezel is the same size as the case. On the old Submariners, the bezel did overhang it a little bit, and that's what this bezel does. The bezel is larger than the actual case itself. The case is a completely different case from the normal Pelagos. As I've already mentioned, this could have been a whole new range in itself. On the case, we have stubbier lugs. It's still completely titanium. It's 42 millimeters wide. Although I wonder if the case is 42 millimeters wide or the bezel is 42 millimeters wide. One of those has to be slightly smaller. The normal Pelagos has 500 meters of water resistance. This version only has 200 meters of water resistance. The crown guards are slightly smaller than the normal Pelagos and the crown is more aggressive. The overall look of the more aggressive bezel, the shorter crown guards and the more aggressive crown gives this watch more of a Submariner feel. It isn't, it clearly isn't a Submariner, but there are aspects of this watch that do tap back to the original Marine National watch that Tudor did. My first thought when I saw this was, where's the option for it to be on a bracelet? The Pelagos bracelet is superb, and I'd love to see that on this. Uh, but true to it being a military watch, it doesn't have spring bars. It has solid strap pins that are welded. They're not even welded in there. They are part of the case. And so all the straps that come with this thing have to be some kind of NATO setup. Let me have a look at the actual wording. Tudor word the, the strap in uh, uh, a funny way. Oh, there you go, one piece fabric strap with self-gripping fastening system. <laughs> Velcro, although Velcro is a trademark, actual brand name, so it's, it's probably not actually Velcro. But it's like uh, Kleenex or Hoover. It's kind of one of those things that's, uh, it was a brand name, 
but it's kind of just become the name for the product. I'm not a massive fan of the straps. Uh, the uh, This Velcro strap, it looks very strong, looks very purposeful, no doubt. It's much easier to connect or, or adjust this sort of strap if you have gloves on, but I'm not a massive fan of that strap. The rubber strap looks interesting in the photographs. It looks pretty cool. It'd be interesting to see that in real life and see what it feels like. I did have a big sense of deja vu with this process of Tudor launching a watch, doing their press shots, uh, and just feeling underwhelmed by what they have offered here. But again, James Stacy of Houdinki or the Grey NATO podcast shared a photograph of this watch on the wrist on a normal NATO strap, and it looks phenomenal. This is why it's crucial for watch brands to do good watch photography. I love Tudor, I'm a big Tudor fan, but the shots that Tudor have done just, I don't know what it is. The shots just don't do anything for me. They're, the light is either too harsh, the colors don't look quite right. James Stacy has nailed this shot. The lighting is perfect, the tones are lovely. This looks phenomenal in this shot, to the point of I would like this watch. Guys, what do you think of this new Pelagos? Drop me a comment down below. And if you have any questions about this watch that you want me to address in a future video about it, then uh, drop those down there as well. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you like the style of this video, hit the subscribe button down there, although this isn't the normal format. If you want to check out our watch straps and watch accessories, jump over to barkandjack.com. We've just dropped a whole load of new stock. Pretty much all NATO straps, no, all NATO straps are in stock now. Uh, and our leather strap should be in stock next week. So jump over to BarkAndJack.com and check that stuff out. If you're on Instagram, give me a follow at BarkAndJack and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.